Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing 20 quick reviews on some Japanese and Korean skincare, makeup, and hair products that I've gotten over the past couple of months. So you might remember seeing some of these products during my Sunday hauls, but now that I've tried everything, I'm ready to share my thoughts with you guys. There's some definite like big hits and also some big misses as well. And I figured I'd just put it all together into one big video and that way we can just cover more ground that way. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started. I'll start with the Japanese beauty products first. Um, just because there's not as many of those and then I'll dive into the K-beauty. So all the Japanese products that I'm going to talk about today are from a website called Cosmeist or Cosmeist. I'm not sure how you say it, but they had sent me these products in PR a while ago and when I unboxed them during my Sunday haul, I got so many questions and just, you know, requests for updates and reviews and things like that. And one of the things that I really love about this website in general is that they're based in the U.S. So you don't have to order from overseas. You don't have to pay all that extra shipping or wait a long time for the products to come and they have some really awesome products that you can't find in stores anywhere so I think it's just really fun to kind of browse the site and see what they have and they're updating their inventory pretty regularly and I also love that you know they have a lot of products but it's not such a huge site that it's overwhelming I feel like it's really curated and they just kind of pick the best of the best things that they really like um, so first up let's talk about some hair products and these are from Amino Mason. So they come in what looks like little mason jars. They look like glass jars, but they're plastic, thankfully. So if you drop it in the shower, it's not gonna be you know, a crazy mess of glass all over. And these are from their Moist line, which is supposed to be more for dry or damaged hair types. And I'm just gonna quickly give you some bullet points about these from the website, just so you can hear a little bit about the formula. Um, so these are supposed to have 18 different kinds of amino acids for hydration and damage repair. They have avocado oil, milk proteins, raw silk, keratin protein, collagen, just to kind of repair and reinforce your hair. They also are free of sulfates, mineral oils, synthetic dyes, and petroleum-based surfactants. So they're supposed to be really gentle. They're pH balanced. Um, they have a fragrance, which is their white rose bouquet, they call it. And it has pear and peach blossom, white rose, magnolia, jasmine, white musk, and amber. I mean, they actually on the website list top, middle, and base notes like a fragrance. And I I have to say I wasn't too crazy about the scent when I first tried these because I'm not really into florals that much especially rose type scents but it did grow on me the more that I used it and I did use these for a couple of weeks on and off and sadly they're a little bit too heavy for my particular hair type I did love how they felt this whipped cream shampoo froths and foams up really nicely and it feels like it's getting your hair clean but it doesn't strip your hair and then this milk cream treatment conditioner feels so nice and super hydrating but they just weighed down my hair a little bit too much. My hair is really fine, but it's also damaged. So there's a really, really fine line between, you know, using too much moisture, like what's in here, and then not enough for me. So it's really difficult for me to find hair care products because like I need so much hydration, but I don't want my hair to be weighed down. And I just felt like when I used this, my hair just looked really flat and it got greasy really, really fast. So I think that this line would probably be better for those who have more textured hair, thicker hair um, you know that doesn't get weighed down easily or you know like I know my sister she has really super thick hair she has like the opposite hair texture than I do and she's always telling me I want like thick heavy products like this one because she wants her hair to be weighed down otherwise it kind of poofs up and looks frizzy so um, I think if you're like her this might be a great option for you these are a little on the pricey side they're $25 each but you're getting quite a bit in here each bottle is 15.2 fluid ounces which is pretty big for a shampoo and conditioner um, and then also in the amino mason line this product I actually really enjoyed um, this is their amino acid hair water and this is from their smooth line so the smooth line is a little bit lighter weight it's still very hydrating and moisturizing it still has those 18 amino acids to repair your hair which is awesome but it's just a little bit of a lighter weight version so I may go back and try the shampoo and conditioner from this line because I think it might get along with my hair a little bit better so this product is also $25 let me just quickly look at the website yes it's $25 and basically what this does is it's a heat protectant and it adds a little bit of extra conditioning so it's kind of I would say like a leave-in conditioner a very light leave-in conditioner and heat protectant so it's really really lightweight as you can see in the bottle it has like a really watery texture it just makes my hair feel really silky really smooth and it doesn't weigh it down like my hair still has a lot of nice bounce to it but also it tames the frizz and protects against heat so I really did enjoy this one 
And then um, another product from Cosmeast is this Plump Pink Lip Treatment. And this is actually, um, they're called the Melty Lip Serum. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name of it. And everything on the back is written in Japanese. So I have no idea what it says, but I'll just read you quickly on the website. So this says that it's a balm type lip gloss that melts with your temperature and provides intense luxurious skincare while plumping lips all in one product. So they come in these cute little lip shaped tubes. They're adorable and this has Maxi Lip, which is, I believe, a peptide complex that's supposed to plump your lips from the inside out. It's supposed to help kind of build up the collagen in your lips. So um, this says that it diminishes wrinkles, hydrates like a lip pack, and improves the lip's natural color. It's infused with raw collagen, hyaluronic acid, honey, shea butter, avocado oil, apricot, rose hip extract and the maxi lip which i mentioned already and it says it's highly adhesive to the lips by melting in with your skin's natural temperature non-sticky glossy with the true color finish these are really really sheer they don't provide a lot of color payoff this shade that i'm wearing is 102 and i can go ahead and just show you quickly the shades that i have I have shades 101 through 107, so when you're looking at the screen from left to right, they go in order from 101 to 107. And I did talk to my PR contact at Cosmeast, and they said that they were gonna be coming out with more tinted versions in the summer at some point, so I'm really excited for those when they do come out because I am in love with this stuff so much. I've been wearing it to bed every single night and during the day, and I would say the plumping effect is pretty subtle, at least immediately. I think it's supposed to work more over the long term, but when you first put it on, it does feel, you can feel a little tiny bit of tingling. It's not stinging or burning. It's really, really mild, but I just kind of notice like the contours of my lip like around the edges looking like a little more defined and it just kind of looks a little bit more plumped up like my wrinkles look smoother and it's really thick like they said it's very much like an overnight lip pack or lip mask and it sticks to your lips for such a long time it's so long wearing when I put this on at night I wake up in the morning and it feels like I just put it on it doesn't disappear it stays right on there and provides that layer so no moisture is going to escape from your lips and it's just like they're so super hydrating like all those different ingredients that are in here like the shea butter and the avocado oil and the apricot oil all this great stuff that's in this formula just really hydrates your lips so nicely and I feel like my lips are looking better and better after wearing this now for the past couple of weeks like I didn't wear these at first I tried it once and I was like oh this is a nice lip balm but when I really started trying it like about two weeks ago I've been seeing already a pretty big difference in the way that my lips look so I'm obsessed with these they're $17 which is a little bit on the pricey side it only is 0.28 ounces I mean I think it'll last a little while but for me it's worth it because it's one of the best lip balms I've ever tried it looks like a gloss because it comes in the tube with the little applicator but it's more like I would say a liquid lip balm they're just incredible so definitely highly recommend these and then the last two products from Cosmeast are ones that I got so many questions on when I first showed these so these are from a brand called Botanical S I'm not sure if I'm saying that right but there's a shower mist, which is like a face mist, and then there's these face masks. And these have so many like wild claims. It's kind of crazy. Um, so this one, it's written all in Japanese again, so I'm just gonna read to you um, off the website. So this one has, it's supposed to be a five-in-one face mist. So you're supposed to use this after you cleanse your face. It's supposed to be a toner, a serum, emulsion, an oil, and a cream all in one so once you cleanse your face you're supposed to just be able to use this and go and that's it and it says it's best for normal to very dry skin I personally have very dry skin so I thought this was gonna be amazing um, it says that 92% of the ingredients are natural botanical extracts and oils including rosemary chamomile lavender avocado aloe and argan oil and more so when I got this the outer packaging was written in English and then you know I had to take that off to open up the product so now I I can't read what it says anymore, but I clearly remember it said, and it has pictures right here, do not shake this product before you use it. It didn't say why, but it was a little bit scary. So I've had to kind of like curb my desire to shake this because whenever I have a can like this, my instinct is just to like shake it up before I use it. So it has a really, really fine mist. I'll just show you what it looks like. I mean, very, very fine, which I love. 
Um, it smells amazing. It has like this bergamot scent to it that's really nice and very spa-like. So I love that about it. And I think that this is a wonderful toner, but is it five-in-one products? No, I would say my skin, at least for me, being really dry, I think I need a lot more than just this before I can walk out the door. Um, so for me, I feel like this could maybe replace like a toner and maybe an essence, but definitely not a serum or a moisturizer. I need a lot more than this gives me. It is moisturizing. I would say for like a toner, it's very hydrating. It's a nice light layer. But for me personally, I have to use an additional moisturizer to this. Now, maybe if you have normal skin, this might be enough. So it might be a cool thing to check out. At the absolute bare minimum, it's an amazing toner and just feels so good. It smells amazing and adds a nice light layer of hydration. So I really do like this stuff a lot. And then the other product from Botanical S, this one has really crazy claims. So this is basically a whole tub of different sheet masks. Once you open it, it's open. They're not individually packaged, but it seals really tightly. And I actually left the outer uh, packaging on this one so that I could still read it. And it says, pop one on in the morning and let the magic happen in just 55 seconds. It says that it's a seven in one product. It's supposed to be a cleanser. Now it's not gonna take makeup off, just a sheet mask, but I think they're assuming you took your makeup up off the night before and cleanse your face so I think they just mean it's supposed to kind of just refresh your face in the morning it says cleanser toner serum emulsion cream pack and foundation primer all in 55 seconds and that it has carefully selected 20 botanical oils and extracts but sadly these did not work for me and the reason is because I couldn't take the scent of them. They have a really strong citrusy scent. When you're putting something like all over your face like this and it was right next to my nose, I just kept smelling it and I almost felt like I was starting to have some sort of allergic reaction to the fragrance, which doesn't happen to me very often, but I couldn't take this off fast enough because I was almost starting to feel like I couldn't breathe a little bit. You know, I'm not saying I was gonna have an allergic reaction, but you know, my personality, my anxious personality, I should say, you know, once I smell something and I feel like, oh my gosh, like I can't breathe because the scent is really strong, immediately like that anxiety creeps in and I just wanna take it off and get rid of it. So I didn't even leave it on for the full minute. I probably had it on for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, um, but it didn't bother my skin. I didn't have any adverse reaction. It was really just the scent that got to me. And I'm normally fine with citrus scents, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, what's in this that was causing that reaction in me. So sadly, that one was a pass, and now I have this whole huge tub of these, um, so I'll probably just pass these along to my mom or my sister or somebody who could use them. Okay, so next up, I have a bunch of K-Beauty products to share with you. The first one is the Laneige moisturizing foam cleanser for normal to dry skin now you might remember I got this in a glossy box that had an Amore Pacific theme so Laneige is owned by Amore Pacific I have a few of their products actually that I'm going to share with you today um, and this has actually been living in my shower since I got that box I love this cleanser so much and I was a little bit worried about using a foaming cleanser on dry skin because foaming cleansers are normally like really stripping really harsh but this one is so gentle so I use it every single morning when I go in the shower even though I take my makeup off at night and I wash my skin at night I just do it again in the morning and this has been wonderful it's a really creamy like soft foam and like I said it just leaves my skin feeling hydrated and not dried out so I absolutely love that and then another Laneige product that I got pretty recently recently is their cream skin toner and moisturizer and they did send this to me actually in PR and this says it's for normal to dry skin and it says simplify your routine it's a two-in-one hybrid that softens like a toner and hydrates like a moisturizer so again not enough moisturization for me that I can get away with skipping that step but as a really nice hydrating toner I think this is great it has like this kind of thicker milky texture that just feels really soothing and calming on my skin so I've been enjoying this one I haven't used that much of it yet I've only had it for a couple of weeks but so far I like it I think if you have dry skin definitely something to check out it's now available at Sephora and then next I have a couple of products from a brand called Iopay and they are also part of Amore Pacific and I got one of their products in that same glossy box this is their Derma Gentle Sica cream and this stuff is so super nice it's a really thick cream it's great for sensitive skin types because there's no fragrance to it at all it's just really gentle ingredients and just a soothing last step I would use this one a lot before bedtime and just wake up with baby soft skin. I don't think that this necessarily has a ton of anti-aging ingredients or anything. It's mainly just to kind of soothe your skin
skin if it's feeling extra dry and stressed out. And then I also got two more IOPay products that I've been trying the last couple weeks. I got these from Octoly, which is a site where if you have a YouTube channel or an Instagram, they have a full store that you can basically choose products that you'd like to get in PR, kind of connect with brands. So because I had tried that Sika cream and I really loved it, I decided to hop on there and see if there were any IOPay products and they did have some. So I requested these and they were so kind and sent them over to me. So um, the first one is the Enlivening Contour Serum. Now this has agave extract in it, I believe, and this is supposed to um, kind of like firm up your skin and really intensely hydrate it. And it's supposed to focus on what they call the ribbon zone, which is this area right here throughout the cheeks. It's supposed to add like plumpness to your cheeks and just make your skin look kind of more bouncy and more elastic. And I have to say, I love this stuff. I've been using this ever since I went on my vacation a few weeks ago. So I had done like the 30 days of the Good Molecules skincare. And then once I was done with that and made that video, I've kind of just been testing out a bunch of different skincare products the last couple of weeks. So I've been using this and it's so super moisturizing and it really does make my skin feel bouncy. It almost has like a honey-like texture to it, but it's not sticky or anything. So don't think of it in that way, but I just mean that it's, it's like a thick serum and it just makes my skin look really glowy and healthy. So I don't know, you know, if it's doing anything else as far as firming goes, but I love the way my skin looks and feels when I use Use it um, and then the other product they sent is the super vital cream and this one's like a really thick heavy duty cream again if you have dry skin I think you're gonna absolutely love it it has a thick and velvety texture it just like melts into the skin and in general I just feel like k-beauty skincare has some of the best textures they're just a pleasure to use they're just so like soothing and comforting and I just love how they make your skin look and feel you know even aside from long-term results they just make your skin look look and feel good right away. And that's what this does. I've been putting this on at night with this serum and I wake up in the morning, my skin just looks so like bouncy and healthy with a really nice glow to it. So um, those are amazing. And these are a little bit more on the expensive side, although not that bad. They're pretty in line with certain things that you'd find at Sephora. So anyway, loving these products so far. Again, I don't know about the long-term results, but I really just have been enjoying using them every night. And then I also have one more product that I got at Octoly and this is the Amore Pacific Dual Nourishing Lip Serum. For a lip serum, this is really pricey. It's $42 and it claims to be a luxurious lip serum with a unique dual layer texture infused with green tea seed oil and vintage green tea essence for younger and fuller looking lips. The packaging on this is really, really beautiful. And then inside the applicator has one of those triangle tips, which I normally really love when it comes to lip products. But there were a couple things that turned me off about this. The first thing is when I pulled the applicator out, it just looked brown and I'm not sure if the product had turned, but it kind of made me a little bit wary about using it. I'm not sure if it's just the oils that had seeped onto the applicator, but it was just kind of a little bit unappetizing to look at. So um, I wasn't a fan of that. And then also, it has a really perfumey scent to it. It smells exactly like you're putting perfume on your lips, like a strong sort of floral fragrance, which I really do not like when it comes to lip products. And then the third thing that I wasn't crazy about is just that it wasn't super hydrating. It's a really thin lip oil and it felt like it hydrated my lips for a few minutes, but then it quickly disappeared and was gone. And then my lips felt dry again. So I really didn't think that this did much for me. It's really, really expensive and I just would hesitate to use it again, even just because of the fragrance alone. So for me, this one was definitely a pass. And then speaking of fragrance, I just wanna jump back over to these really quickly because I didn't mention the fragrance and I know for some of you guys that is definitely a deal breaker. These do also contain fragrance. Um, the Sika cream doesn't, I think I did mention that, but these have kind of like a light, fresh fragrance. It's just more of like a soapy fragrance, I would say. It's nothing overpowering, at least for me. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. So just something to keep in mind though, if you are sensitive to fragrance in skincare. And then I have two more skincare products before we dive into some makeup. So these are from the brand G9. I got these at Kohl's a while back. I also showed these in my Sunday haul. There's a toner and then this sunscreen cushion which I thought was a really interesting product so this is an SPF 50 it's called white and creamy cushion so it also has whitening brightening ingredients in it so it's supposed to be kind of like a primer slash sunscreen in one so it comes in a little cushion compact like this when you open it up it has this little swirl inside 
side, which is supposed to add like a hint of a rosy glow to your skin. When I use this, I can't even see where I'm putting it. So it is very lightweight, like most cushion compacts are. It feels really nice going on the skin. It almost has a cooling effect to it. But as far as using it for sunscreen, I'm a little bit hesitant because I can't see where I'm putting this at all. It just kind of disappears as soon as you put it on your skin. And I'm really particular about sunscreen, very careful about it. And I just didn't want to like miss a spot. And I feel like with this, it's really easy to do that because you have no idea where you're putting it and it just sinks into your skin and disappears. So you really can't even feel where you put it. So I do really like how lightweight it is, especially for a mineral sunscreen. Usually mineral sunscreens have like a white cast to them. They're really thick and hard to rub in. So for that reason, I think it's an awesome sunscreen. It's really formulated well in that regard, but I just wish there was a little bit more of a tint to it so I could see where I'm putting it because that was kind of the one downside to this. And then the other product that I got from G9 Skincare is the White in Milk Toner. And I got this right around the same time as the Laneige, but this one is less than half the price. It's $16. This one retails for $33. Actually, as I'm looking at the Kohl's website right now, this is $8. So I don't know if the sale will still be going on once this video goes up, but definitely worth checking out because this is a huge bottle and it is very similar to the Laneige. I feel in a lot of ways it has pretty much the exact same texture. It's like that slightly thicker, milky toner. It's very, very hydrating on the skin, especially good for dry skin. This one also has brightening ingredients, some fruit extracts. It has wine extract. It has a bunch of different botanicals in it. Also, the outer packaging said that this had niacinamide. On the website, it doesn't, but I found that the ingredient lists on the Kohl's website versus the packaging that these came in is a little bit different, so I'm not sure if the Kohl's thing is accurate. I think I would go by the packaging that this came in, and it did say that it had niacinamide pretty high up on the ingredient list. And if you watch my Good Molecules video, you know that I have been loving niacinamide. It's really helped to smooth out the texture on my cheeks. So um, that's one of the reasons actually why I bought this because I saw that in the ingredients. And I would say the only downside to this product is that it does have a little bit of a strong fragrance that I'm not too fond of. Um, I feel like they tried to kind of give it like, like a milky fragrance, but there's something else to it that I can't quite place. I don't know if it's like the mix of botanicals that are in here, like the wine. I feel like it almost has like a bitterness to it. It's it's a really strange combination. I'm not too fond of the scent of this one. This one is unscented. So again, if you're sensitive to fragrance, I would go with this one 100%. So like I said, that's the downside to this one. But if you're not sensitive to fragrance, I think this is a great cheaper alternative to the Laneige. All right, so moving on to some Korean makeup, I got a nice package from Holika Holika and they sent over their Milky line which I believe is in collaboration with a Japanese candy company I think that's what it is but this is like their logo of the candy company and it's on the products themselves all the products smell really good they have candy scents to them and they're just so super cute and adorable and I'm actually wearing a lot of these products today so I'll definitely be able to tell you what they are as I go so the first product is these really cute little Pico or Peco I'm not sure how you say that um, but they're like jelly blushes. So when you open them up, it looks like jelly in a tin basically. And these blushes are so awesome. I'll show you quickly a close up of what these look like going on to the skin because I think they're amazing. They're so natural looking and they look dark in the jar, but they go on very sheer. They're super easy to build up. And I think what I love about the gel versus a cream blush is how natural it looks. It really looks like the blush is just coming from within your skin versus sitting on top. So I have really been loving using these. Now I'm wearing the lightest shade. They have no names on them. I mean, they're all in Korean again, so I'm not 100% sure what shade this is. I think when I saw these on the Amazon website, this lighter color was called strawberry, but I can definitely double check for you guys. I'll just quickly show you swatches and I'll put the colors if I can figure them out um, down on the screen below. But I mean, they look, like I said, really dark in the jar, but they go on sheer. They're so super easy to build up. And also they smell like strawberry. They smell like, like a strawberry candy. They smell so, so good. Um, and that's another thing that I quickly want to mention because I mentioned Amazon. So I know sometimes 
when you order from there, it ships from a third party, but these are actually stocked by Holika Holika. It's their actual, you know, it's not like a third party. It's actually them and they ship from Amazon. And if you have Prime, I believe all of these are Prime eligible, so you get them like in a day or two as well with the free shipping. So then the next product that they have in this line is their Luminizer. So it's in kind of the same packaging as the blush, really super cute. And this is a cream formula, so I'll show you a close up of what it looks like in the jar and what it looks like swatched. It's not an intense, crazy highlighter at all. It's really natural looking. I'm wearing it today, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can definitely see it in person. It's just really super subtle, and that's how I like my highlighters. And this one has kind of like a caramel or a chocolate scent. It smells so good. I'm loving like all the candy scents in these. And then another thing I didn't expect to like at all, but I love it, is this eyeshadow palette. They have two different versions. One is more of like a pinky purple, and this one has nudes, and they're just like the most beautiful caramel colors. First of all, they have that same like caramel chocolate scent that the Luminizer has, so I love it. It reminds me a little bit of Too Faced Chocolate Bar, actually, they smell very similar. But what I was really blown away with when it comes to this palette was the pigmentation. When I swatched these for the first time, I wasn't expecting anything, but I was blown away by how pigmented this was, and so smooth, too. The textures on them are incredible. I'll go ahead and just show you swatches. They're just like the perfect warm nude shades. They're so beautiful, and the three matte shades have zero fallout. They are so well pressed into the pan, but easy to pick up and super soft at the same time. It's like the perfect combination. The only shadow in this palette I felt like was just slightly hard to work with is this metallic one right here. It's a beautiful color, but it's a little bit sheer. It's hard to pick up on a finger so I did have to wet my brush just to apply it to my eyes and really kind of make it pop a little bit more because it applied a little bit more like a topper and some of the glitter did fall down onto my face so just something to keep in mind the other three had no fallout but this one had quite a bit so because I had already used the other three I kind of wasn't expecting the fallout with this one so next time I'll probably just be a little bit more careful to tap off my brush but overall just such a beautiful palette and definitely a surprise Next up, there was a lip product in the bag. This one's called Tint Bomb, and I don't know what color this is again because it's all written in Korean, but it's basically a lip stain in a tube. So when I put this on, it has kind of like a watery texture. It feels like a gel going on, um, and it's really, really pigmented, very dark. It went on darker than I was expecting it to. I think I was expecting more of like a sheer tint, but it's basically a lip stain, and when I put this color on my lips, it looked like I just ate a cherry popsicle, so it definitely gives that effect. It's not glossy, it sinks right into your lips, but I also found that it wasn't super drying, and a lot of lip stains are, so it did have that going for it, but I'm just not really a lip stain kind of a person for the most part, so I doubt I'll be using this much, but I did think it was kind of interesting because usually stains are like a liquid Form, and this one is more of a stick. And then the last product is this Glow Cushion, and this one actually does say the shade name on the outside, so this one is in O2 Petal, which is supposed to be more of like, um, like a pinky tone foundation. And first of all, this packaging is so cute. It came in like a little milk carton. And inside, it basically just looks like your everyday cushion foundation, so you just open the little door, and that's what the shade looks like. I felt like this shade was okay for me. I'm wearing it today, and I thought it was like a decent match. The only thing that I didn't like about this is that it is super, super glowy. So when I went outside, I felt like my skin just looked like too shiny and too dewy. And it has not glitter, but like maybe kind of a pearlized effect. And I really didn't like how it seemed to highlight all of like my pores and my wrinkles. I think if I was maybe 20 years old, this would be okay. But now that I'm 41, it's a little bit too much sheen for me, a little bit too dewy. But it did actually make me want to try a cushion foundation again. It's been a while since I used one, but I miss how easy they are to use. It's so super simple to just pat them on and go. And this one also has a mineral SPF of 52. And because you could see where you're putting it, I would actually trust this one a lot more than I would trust this one from G9. So that was one good thing about it. I just wish it didn't have a sheen. So I'm kind of thinking now that I want to go back and grab the Laneige Cushion Foundation because I really enjoyed that one a few years back and I'd like to try it again. I think they're great for the summertime just because of how lightweight they are. They have a really nice skin-like finish. So I might do that. But if you don't mind a glowy foundation, I thought that the formula of this one was really nice. All right, guys. So that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
video and found it helpful. I hope it's not too super long. Um, my voice is kind of feeling like it's starting to give out. I had to keep stopping and getting some water because it's getting kind of scratchy. But anyway, let me know down in the comments below if you've tried any of these products or what you think of them. Are you thinking about purchasing any of them? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.